What I'm working on here is the um, scenic area for the um, the area where the two um, high-rise apartments are. Um, you might have seen this in one of my previous updates. This is the kind of base area where the flats will sit. And I've brought it downstairs and um, I've drawn the outline of where the flats are on, on uh, both occasions. If you can see that because of the spray paint. And uh, then I've worked out what I can actually do with this area. It's very narrow. Um, so there's not a lot I really can do. I kind of hoped for some kind of um, wash, washing lines, in, um, you know, maybe the odd shed, etc. But there isn't really that much room to do it justice. So what I've decided to do is, I've got a template here. This is the area that will be paved. And what it covers is the obviously the, the footprints of the flats plus a pavement area in front of them so people can get to their front door. Um, I might have a, a, a lamp post, single lamp post security light there um, to stop it looking so dingy and dark. And uh, this area here, which I've sprayed in Humbro Acrylics um, Earth Colour, um, that's going to be the, the basis for the the, the unkept garden um, kind of area. Uh, weeds, static grass and that kind of thing. Remember there will be a retaining wall in front of this as well, so this is set down from the track level anyway. So you won't see too much of this, so that's why I'm not really putting, you know, a massive amount of um, energy into making it uh, that scenic. And obviously there's a retaining wall here as well, so the flats are kind of boxed in below the, the level of the track. So what I've got is that's my template, and I've got uh, some sheets of the scale scenes um, paving, which I've printed out and I've given a, a couple of coats of um, matte varnish to kind of seal them and that's now dry. What I'm now going to do in the next stage that I'm going to show you is make the the, the, um, the card template, um, attach the, the paper, trim it all up and um, work through this scenic part and then hopefully that just slots back into the layout. The flats get put down on top of it and it's, uh, it's kind of finished. Okay, what I've done here is I've taken the paper template that I showed you in the last clip and I drew round it onto this 2mm thick grey board. I then spray mounted the paving paper onto that and once it was dry I just trimmed it up neatly with a craft knife. There's a join in the paper round about here and another join round about here somewhere. I think this join was quite a, a task to get lined up. Yeah, there it is. So you can see it's... Uh, Hardly noticeable. You won't actually see that bit once the flat's on it, etc. etc. But I thought I may as well, you know, um, make as neat a job as I can. The angle of the paving is at 90 degrees to the, the angle of the, the actual apartment, so it will look like it was actually laid after the apartments were built. Um, so I've, I've kind of taken that into consideration. All that leads me to do now is to um, glue this onto the onto the ply and then start to work on the, the overgrown uh, flower borders and you know unkept area here. So that'll be my next my next job. <laughs> What I've done here is I've taken some uh, PVA and I've just coated the, the area that was previously painted brown. Okay, and now I'm going to use some Woodland Scenics materials. I'm going to use um, fine turf earth and fine turf soil just to kind of give it a, a base coat before I add any scenic um, grasses and stuff like that. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to sprinkle it liberally using the shaker end. Don't worry about any uh, over spill onto the, the paving because it will just come off. Be quite liberal with it because it, what it doesn't stick you can shake off and um, that can be used again. That's why I've put some paper towel down like that. Okay. Um, Tiny wee bit of that just to a bit of variation. There we go. Done. Now, all I have to do now is wait for that to set, shake off the excess, and uh, 
apply the next layer of scenic material. I'll just show you what I've done there. Let me see that. Okay, now that the scatter has dried, I'm now ready to apply some static grass. The static grass that I'm using today is the 4.5mm early fall, which is the right kind of shade for the, the time of year which I am modelling. Um, I've put a panel pin in to, um, to ground it so that the static fibres are attracted to um, fire out of the static grass applicator, and the one I'm using is the, the NOSH. Right, I've put glue in the areas that I would like the static grass to um, attach itself to. You know, I'm, I'm just applying it neat. Um, some people like to apply it in a kind of watered down mix. Just for this particular area, because it's so small, I'm just applying it um, without watering it down. And you just, self explanatory you just dab at the areas you want the grass to attach itself. This, the area which is not covered, in glue at the moment will be bushes under bush under growth and that kind of stuff so I'm not too bothered about covering the whole scene. Okay now that I'm ready to apply the static grass I've got my applicator here and I'm going to um, power it up and just you know, two or three centimeters above the static grass starts to flow out and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to shake it Now I want it quite a, a thick grass, so I'm going to keep going over it several times. And it helps if your battery and your static grass applicator is uh, in full working order. Because I've been doing my last section and I noticed it was getting a bit weak. I think the static grass uh, would need a new battery applicator. So I'm going quite heavy here on the, the thickness and the density because it's supposed to be a lawn before it uh, was let to grow wild. And there we go. And that's quite thick. Um, and that's it. Turn the machine off and take the pin out. Now, I've got a lot of waste there. As you can see, I've put a piece of uh, A3 paper down underneath just to stop it. Uh, I can now use that again, mop it up and, and then use it again. We'll wait for this to dry and then we'll uh, vacuum off the excess and we'll see how it looks. Okay, now we've got the static grass has dried in place. You can see that clearly. Um, I say it's uh, four and a half millimetres. And it's covered the area that the glue was applied to and obviously when I've shaken it and um, given it a light vacuum, it has uh, left the, the earth section. What I'm really going to do now is I'm going to build up the scenery using a mixture of underbush and bushes in light greens, olive greens, uh, medium greens. I'm also going to use some of this um, foliage. It's a kind of um, netting with it's been almost impregnated by the kind of fine foliage and that is good for sprawling bushes and, and, and low-lying plants. So that's what I'm kind of going to use in this area. Very, very small. It's not going to take me long to uh, kind of, you know, go with the flow and, and come up with some um, scenic, uh, you know, features. Also what I've got here is I've kind of been experimenting with um, kind of like reed grass. Um, and this is your kind of long fibres, woodland scenics. And I've got them a couple of shades, and I might just use them. Obviously, I'll trim these down a wee bit, they're a bit tail on the long side, um, just to kind of give the impression of some kind of um, reeds and um, long grass in, the, in a kind of garden border. These are ideal actually for using against a riverbank, um, you know. Um, a lake kind of to simulate the high reeds that you, you would get um, along the edges of, of a river bank. But I say you can use them in gardens to uh, emulate tall growing um, you know, straw like plants. I'm not a gardener so I don't really know the name of the, the plants but I, and I've got one beside my garden myself um, so I'm, I'm going to kind of try and emulate that.
One thing I forgot to show you earlier, um, before I applied any of the scenic material, what I did was, I don't know how well you can see this here, in between the paving stone and the grass there's a thin plasticard strip that I sprayed grey and it runs all the way along the edge in between the, the grass and the paving area. Now that can uh, simulate a, an edging stone um, as you would find along the edge of uh, paving to stop the paving obviously creeping and, and, and moving but the reason for me doing it here was because when you use Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement it's got a wetting agent in it and if you spray it on an area and it seeps into a, a part of the card that's, that's exposed for example on the edges what happens is the wetting agent soaks into the card and it, it lifts the card and kind of distorts it um, I found this to my cost on some areas where I put ballast down and then later gone in with the wetting agent of the scenic cement and it's kind of soaked into the platform edges. It's fine when it dries out but it, it does tend to leave a kind of more of a raised section like a blister area. So what I did here was I just um, cut a thin strip of plastic card, glued it or sprayed it then glued it in place and it kind of prevents a seal, prevents any um, seepage and, and gives a seal of the actual um, you know, between the border, between the borders, the flowers and the, the paving. And I recommend you do that if you are, you know, using um, watery substances next to card. It seems to be fine when the Woodland Scenic, scenic Cement goes on this, because this has been protected with varnish, it won't soak in. But, I did, I, as I've said, it does soak up in exposed edges. Okay, what I've done here so far is I've just put some um, finely foliage, which is uh, comes in boxes. It's kind of like you can make trees out of it, small sapling trees as well. I've just ripped off a piece and uh, placed it on the layout there just now to kind of create a, a a small tree. I've then got some of the um, foliage medium green and the olive green, and I've just cut bits off and teased them out. To give the impression that they um, are kind of sprawling bushes. And also what I'm going to do is I've got some of the the tall grass, it's called field grass, um, and this is a medium green one. You take bits out and what I've done with this is I've got a piece of um, ply here with different size holes drilled in it for another thing that I'm going to show you later. Um, and all I've done is I've kind of see, taped them together, there's one here actually, taped them together with a bit of masking tape, fed them through the holes, okay, I'm sure there's other ways to do this but this is the way I've decided to do it, feed it through the hole, okay, and then when it's through the back you can just seal it with a bit of UHU glue above the tape and when it's dry, take the, snip the bit of the tape off and you've got yourself a kind of tall grass um, tuft, if you like and then that's just ready to uh, be glued, like that one be glued onto the, onto the layout and uh, tr 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 trimmed to the size or shape that you want it to give the impression of tall grasses in clumps so that's what I'm going to work on now Okay, there's the finished scene. Um, I've added some tall grasses in. And all I did to kind of widen them out is I just pressed them like that to give the impression that they're actually growing and not just plonked in uh, by a giant hand. Um, I've got some underbush, some of the fine leaf foliage, some of the uh, green foliage there that I showed you in the last clip, a little bit more on the end there. And here I've got some uh, kind of purple flowers scattered onto the the um, kind of cloth, the, the foliage cloth, and it gives the impression, obviously, of, of um, a bush with some flowers. I think that was a green scene scatter that I bought. So there we go. Once that's all uh, in place on the layout, that should look pretty good. To get the um, purple flowers to hold, all I did was I just took some uh, snake cement in a small kind of pipette thing and then just dripped it on 
uh, make sure not to get any on the card and uh, that will just hold it down in place. You could use hairspray, that's another way of doing it. Let me know what you think. Um, once I'll, I'll show a clip with it in situ um, on the layout and obviously when the flats and that are round about it and maybe some uh, you know, a lamp post or and some maybe characters and a bit more weed uh, up against the retaining walls which will be at the end here then it should be uh, fairly well bedded in. Remember it was supposed to be a kind of kept garden border hence the neat edges that's been allowed to um, the grass has been allowed to grow a wee bit too much and you know just generally lacking a bit of uh, attention. Okay here we have the flats in uh, position with the, the newly done paved area with gardens. Um, as you can see now the, how the, the slabs kind of sit at the correct angle to match the um, low relief apartment blocks. Um, and if you just peek over the wall here you will see the, the garden area that I've just done. Okay it's not very um, visible from the front of the layout but you know, when you peek your head over the wall, it's nice that there's a little bit of detail there. Um, it didn't take long to do. It wasn't a big uh, job, so I don't mind doing that. Right in between the flats here, I might put a, a lamp post um, with some, yeah, security light on it. Um, as you can see from the graffiti, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a wee bit of a run-down area. So maybe a bit of lighting would, would help um, the residents feel a bit safer at night. And I've got a couple of um, figures that I want to put in there, um, shady, shady characters, um, just to set the scene off. Obviously when the backboards are in place with the back scenes on them, it'll look um, like a properly finished scene, but at the moment, that's all I've got. Hope you've enjoyed this little um, video with uh, a kind of step-by-step -step guide on how to do a mini scene. Uh, if you've got any comments, as always, I really look forward to, to reading them. Cheers just now.